Uh, well, uh, hello and welcome back. Um, it's been a while since our last video, but uh, thanks a lot for uh, watching and for your support uh, uh, during this time and uh, hope you'll continue to watch the series. Um, so today we can sort of uh, start uh, and uh, sort of resume the series with a new topic, which is that of uh, integration of complex uh, functions. And uh, if you recall uh, our discussion on differentiation of complex functions, uh, the way we started was uh, we, we we sort of thought about what is what does it mean to differentiate a function of one real variable, and then generalize that onto the complex plane. And in the process, we came across conditions under which it's meaningful to talk about the derivative of a function at a point, uh, and sort of that got us into the ideas ideas of analytical functions. So I'll just post a link to the video in case, um, in case um, uh, as a reminder. And for, the, for 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 the integration of complex functions, again, we'll sort of start thinking along very similar lines. So um, so. So let's just get started with what does it mean to integrate a function of one real variable? Um, so function integrals of a function of one real variable and uh, the familiar sort of notion is that the integral essentially approximates the area under the curve. So let's say this is some function. Uh, this is the y-axis, this is the x-axis, and this is some function y equals f of x. Then uh, the symbol that we use for integral from let's say the point x equals a to x equals b, uh, the symbol we use is sort of like a summation symbol. It's going from x equals a to x equals b of the function f of x dx. Uh, so the physical interpretation of this sort of symbol or notation or this integral is the area under the curve. Uh, the curve y equals fx, the x-axis from x equals a to x equals b, and the two vertical lines at x equals a and x equals b. And as you can see, the path of integration on that we are integrating from x equals a to x equals b. Um, and this integral physically uh, um, sort of arises or, 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 or the way we sort of, why this is an approximation of the area under this curve can be thought of uh, with the idea of what we call Riemann sum. So essentially uh, what we do is we, we, we take this, uh, the area under this curve in order to approximate this, uh, we, we split it into rectangles of this form. Okay. Okay. So we have divided this area with rectangles. And then we pick up some point, let's say, let's say we choose this rectangle. Uh, we pick up some point uh, here, let's say uh, xi. We pick up the point xi, evaluate the value of the function at xi, which will be this value. So we calculate f of xi. And then if the, uh, so that'll be the height of the rectangle. Now the width of this region, this the width of this region is delta xi, then the area of this particular rectangle is fxi delta xi. Likewise, we calculate the area of this rectangle, this rectangle, this rectangle, this, 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 and this, and we sum all of these rectangles and denote it with the summation symbol. So summation fxi delta xi over the index i, where i denotes the ith rectangle. Um, and in the limit that um, the delta xi is, the width of delta xi is, goes to zero, uh, this quantity, which is called the Riemann sum, in the limit that delta xi goes to zero, this approximates, or this is what we denote with the symbol x equals a to x equals b, f of x dx, and it approximates the area under the curve. And in this particular limit, when delta xi goes to zero, uh, it, um, the, the, the particular point within a rectangle where we choose to evaluate the value of the function becomes less and less relevant because as these rectangles become narrower and narrower, it, it, becomes, it, it's, it becomes less and less important where uh, within this narrow region we pick up a point to evaluate the value of the function. So this then becomes a better and better approximation of the area under the curve in the limit delta xi goes to zero, which is what we denote with this particular symbol. So, uh, so this is just a reminder of the basic idea of integration of a function of one real variable. And um, so now let's say when we start talking about integrals of complex functions, um, 
we want to generalize these ideas. And immediately we'll see that some interesting questions arise. So, uh, so for instance, let's just draw the complex plane where this is the real part of Z and this is the imaginary part of Z. And let's say, uh, let's just say that, okay, we want to think about the symbol uh, that we've understood from functions of one real variable. We, we, we just want to import that symbol onto the complex plane. So we want to integrate something, whatever integration means, we still haven't defined it. But let's say we want to integrate a function of a complex variable from uh, the complex point z equals a to z equals b, some complex function, w of z dz. So I'm taking a lot of liberty here in writing this uh, notation, but uh, let's just say we want to just generalize this idea onto the complex plane. So, um, so a few questions immediately arise. So let's say this is z equals a, and this is z equals b. So first and foremost, uh, one of the questions that arises is, okay, what is the meaning of this quantity? What is it that we are evaluating here? The meaning in the case of a function of one real variable is, is quite uh, clear, because that's how the idea of integral came about, which is trying to approximate the area under the curve. But in the complex plane, what does this symbol really mean? So, so that's one question that arises, which is, um, what does it physically means to evaluate the integral of a complex function? That's one of the most important questions. Um, the other question that arises is, if we, if we, if we sort of uh, think about the uh, integral of a function of one real variable, in that case, we were integrating along the real axis. We are evaluating this area by integrating along the real axis from x equals a to x equals b. So the path of integration is quite clear. We are going from x equals a to x equals b. Uh, but what happens in the complex plane? How do we go from z equals a to z equals b? We can choose to go along this path, for instance, that's one path. Or we can take another path. Or we can take another path. And as you can see, we have infinitely many choices for the path that we want to take from z equals a to z equals b. So, so the next question that arises is, um, which path to choose? to take. And a related question is, does the value of the integral depend upon the particular path we choose? Does value of integral depend upon the path? And, and we still have to understand what the value of the integral means, which is the first question. So, but let's say it has some meaning, then does that value depend upon the path? And, 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 and another interesting sort of related question is, uh, if the value of the integral does depend upon, upon the path in general, um, then are there any conditions under which the value of the integral does not depend upon the path? So conditions such that value does not depend upon the path. And this in particular is a very interesting question. And the reason is, um, if you again recall uh, integration of function of one real variable, let's say we integrate from x equals a to x equals b, the some function f of x dx, then the fun from the fundamental theorem of calculus, we know that if a, a small f of x has an antiderivative capital F, let's say we denote the, the antiderivative of capital F, then the value of this integral is capital F evaluated at b minus capital F evaluated at a. So we see that the value of the integral 
does not depend upon the path. Essentially, there's just one path in this case, case but the value of the integral just depends upon the endpoints. Uh, and this essentially is uh, the fundamental theorem of calculus. And, and if there are conditions under which a similar kind of uh, result holds true for functions of complex variables, uh, then it will be interesting to see what those conditions are. Because in that case, no matter which path we choose, the value of the integral of the function of complex variable will not depend upon the path. So, uh, so essentially, the study of complex integration uh, broadly revolves around uh, exploring these questions. And, and it's a very interesting journey because um, many rich ideas um, uh, arise in, in, in that context. And uh, <clears throat> essentially, once we understand complex integral, we can start talking about um, uh, many interesting ideas like proving that uh, proving that analytical functions are infinitely differentiable and, and a lot of interesting results can come about uh, once we understand these ideas so uh, so, so, so in, the, in the next part of this uh, videos uh, we'll sort of explore these ideas further and uh, and hopefully that'll be interesting so uh, hope to see you soon and thanks again for watching